All right, good evening to everyone. As you're, as you're filing in, we'll get started in just a moment. Great. Welcome to the Georgia Virtual College Fair and thank you for joining us this evening. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time and we'll answer those at the end of the presentation. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. Just a reminder that this is one of many different sessions happening as part of Georgia Virtual College Fair so be sure to sign up for additional ones. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week's time at the same website where you initially um, registered for this session. Now I'd like to turn it over to our presenter, Hal Wilkinson from Georgia Student Finance Commission. Good evening, everybody. My name's Hal Wilkinson. I'm with the Georgia Student Finance Commission. I'm your K-12 outreach staff. Let's talk money for the pro season. Our agenda, we will define financial aid, types of aid, federal programs, Georgia's financial aid programs, the application process for FAFSA and financial aid packages. Financial aid helps pay for educational expenses, direct and indirect costs, the cost of attendance. Direct costs goes toward what's directly related to the institution, indirect costs, the student has more control over. Hal, I don't mean to interrupt, but did you mean to um, share the display at this point? Because it's not showing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So if you go back and share screen. Oh, I'm sorry. No worries. I just figured you might want people to see the display. <laughs> My bad. Oh. That would help. <laughs> okay. Now. Let me back up. Perfect. <laughs> okay, thanks for bearing with me, folks. Um, but again, I'm Hal Wilkinson. We're talking about, I'm with the Georgia Student Finance Commission. I'm your K-12 outreach staff. We administer Hope Scholarship. This is the agenda. We're going to discover different resources for help paying for your education. Uh, financial aid helps pay for financial aid expenses. You have direct costs, indirect costs. The direct costs, notice, it goes toward straight to your uh, institution. The indirect costs are uh, more control of the students. Cost of attendance is basically the estimate combined from both indirect and indirect. How are you gonna pay for all this? Types of financial aid. Uh, you have financial aid comes in different forms, scholarships, grants, loans, work study, through the different resources below, uh, we'll discuss it, the federal and state, colleges, universities, private foundations. So let's take a look at the types of federal uh, financial aid. You have the HOPE Scholarship, which is state aid. You have need-based, which is the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, the Pell Grant. Non-need-based, which is the HOPE Grant for state technical schools, student and parent loans, employment opportunities, military grant and aids, and uh, also your savings plan like your, your 529 plans. Let's look at scholarships. Scholarships, people think that it's always based on grade point averages and SATs and ACTs, but not all the scholarships are. It can be based on height. Are you a male six foot two, female five ten or taller? TCI, Tall Club International, that's a thousand dollars. Ethnicity, the Coca-Cola Foundation Scholarship, Goiseta, the Hispanic Scholarship Fund, religious affiliation. Uh, these are just a few, and this is my favorite. The duct tape scholarship, make that prom dress and tux out of duct tape, submit a picture to the duct tape brand company, y'all may win $5,000 a piece. What if you're average, then average Joe, get a job. Quick trip, 20, 25 hours a week, maintain a certain GPA, They'll give you $2,000 per semester on top of your pay. 
I said, if that's the case, what will Racetrack give me? Racetrack said after 500 hours of employment, they provide tuition assistance. More companies are doing what Chick-fil-A and these hospitals have been doing for years. So when you're looking for a job, see if they provide tuition assistance as well. Then there's some scholarship tips. We administer the website gafutures.org. We have a scholarship search, but on the tips is start early, apply for more than one, two, or three, uh, narrow it down, your search. What's unique about you? List, like they say, hobbies. And most of all, hold on. Do not pay anybody to find you scholarships. Now let's talk about federal aid. Uh, you have to be a U.S. citizen or uh, be a recipient of the uh, a high school graduate or GED. And also, males 18 to 26 must uh, register for selective service. And let's look at federal aid programs. When you fill out the FAFSA, you may qualify for the Pell Grant. It's 6345 that's a grant you don't have to pay back, back based on the expected family contribution, how much mom and dad can contribute towards your education. You may qualify for the S FSEOG grant, which is a federal supplemental education opportunity grant. It's as little as 100 up to $4,000. It depends on how much the financial aid office will determine on that. Then you have other programs like federal work study. These are jobs tailored toward the college student, especially if they need time to take exams or study. And this is not reported income because it's through federal funding. So it's a job on campus, but it's not reported income. Then you, let's talk about loans. You have the direct subsidized, unsubsidized, parent plus loan. Let's take a look at each one. The un, well, the subsidized, the interest is covered by the federal government as long as you're enrolled half time. It is based at an interest of 2.75% interest. You don't pay it back till six months from the time you graduate four years down the road. The unsubsidized, the interest accrues, but you still wait six months from the time you graduate four years down the road, or if you quit school six months from the time you, uh, if you decide to quit school, that's when you pay it back, 2.75% interest. Then there's the Parent PLUS loan. Parents, let's pull you into the fold. This is based on your credit history. It's a gap loan. Basically, when you have looked at everything, you still need more money, uh, they'll run a credit check on you, uh, parent. And if you qualify, it's at 5.30% interest. When do you start paying it back? They start school in August. You'll make monthly payments in October. Look at the scale. Your base loans is your subsidized. You'll get 3,500 your freshman year, 45 your sophomore year, 55 your junior, senior year. Then you get a standard $2,000 unsubsidized each year. Look at the second column. Suppose parents get turned down for the Parent PLUS loan based on a credit check. A student can go back and request that the 2,000 unsubsidized can be increased to 6,000. But you're gonna go from 5,500 your freshman year to 9,500. Keep in mind, in order to increase that, you've got to, uh, parents have to be turned down for the Parent PLUS loan. So the good thing about these loans, they can be forgiven. If you work for a nonprofit, work for a, uh, a field in demand in education or the medical field. So these are uh, probably the best way to go. Let me step back one. Okay, then let's talk about Georgia's uh, financial aid programs, Hope Scholarship. It is tied to the lottery. It's been around since 1993. These are the eligibility requirements for Hope. Again, males uh, 18 to 26 should register for selective service. Also uh, meet the citizenship requirements. These are the list of the schools that you can find on gafutures.org that participate in the HOPE Scholarship Program. These are the HOPE programs. Let's take a look at HOPE Scholarship. You gotta have a 3.0 GPA in all core classes, four academic rigor classes. Look what it says, after high school graduation may also earn HOPE. 
if you don't get hooked coming out of high school, maintain a 3.0 at the end of 30 semester credit hours, you'll be able to get it for your sophomore year of college. The academic rigor classes, you had to complete four before you graduate. They're found on gafutures.org. And this gives you a list of what they are. You can check your Hope GPA starting in the 10th grade under your profile on gafutures.org. This kind of gives you an idea of what it looks like uh, so you can keep on track. What do you have to do to maintain the Hope Scholarship? Maintain a 3.0 every 30 college credit hours. What if you have a 2.9 at the end of 30 college credit hours? You'll lose Hope for your sophomore year, but pull it back to 3.0, you get it back your junior year. Then let's look at Zell Miller Scholarship. The salutatorian or valedictorian of your class or have a 3.7 GPA with a 1200 on the SAT or a 26 on the ACT. Let me clarify something. USG schools have required they can waiver the SAT and ACT scores. Let me go back. A rumor is going around that uh, for Zell Miller, have they waived the SAT and ACT scores? No, we haven't. We still require those. If you take the SAT, we are listed on the College Board as Georgia Student Finance Authority. Or you can uh, request ACT to send us. So we need a copy also of the SAT and ACT. Okay? To maintain Zell Miller, you maintain a 3.3 every 30, 60, 90 hours. What if you got a 3.2 at the end of your freshman year of college? You're going to go from Zell Miller to Hope because you're still in the 3.0 range. You can only lose Hope and Zell Miller one time, then you can, you can gain it back. But keep this in mind, how do you lose both these? Not maintain the GPA, exceed 127 attempted hours, or 10 years from the time you graduate, uh, you've got 10 years to take advantage of the Hope Scholarship and Zell Miller program, otherwise it expires or you've, you've completed your first professional or bachelor's degree. Now, how about the HOPE program? That is for state technical schools. It's for certificate and diploma programs. There's no high school diploma or GED requirement, no GPA or uh, test considered. You can apply for it, but to maintain it, you have to have a 2.0 either at 30 or 60 semester credit hours, and it'll cover up to 63 semester credit hours. Suppose you, uh, you find something at the state technical schools you're passionate about. If you maintain a 3.5, this covers full standard tuition, which we'll get into at all state technical schools. You just need to maintain a 3.5 at the end of each semester. These, then we have what they call the HOPE career grant. If you go into a particular field at a state technical school, they're going to give you money on top of that. So Mr. Wilkinson, you've talked about the requirements. What do you get for all your hard work? If you get the Hope Scholarship, it'll cover a portion of your tuition, normally between 60 to 80 percent. Zell Miller with SAT and ACT requirements and the 3.7 covers full standard tuition at private schools is 2152 per semester. Zell Miller is 28.08 per semester. The state technical schools is the standard of your tuition. And also Zell Miller grant covers full tuition. The Hope Career Grant, if you go into a specified uh, area in a state technical school, uh, depends on how many hours that you sign up for, uh, this is what you get. Look at uh, truck driving, you can get up to 1,000. So you see in Georgia, we, we give you a lot of uh, great programs to complement the federal. We also have a loan for all schools in Georgia. It's called the Student Access Loan. It's kind of like the, the Parent PLUS loan. It helps kind of fill in the gap. You apply after you have filled out your FAFSA. It's at 1% interest. And it's $10 a month. But use it only if you need it. How do you apply for these programs? Fill out the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid every year, or go to GA Futures, 
click on the Hope and State Aid link, click on the State Aid Applications button. Then you'll see our list of programs. At the top is GSF Apps. You click on it. This is where you can apply for Hope as a backup application. It's good for 10 years for a Hope Scholarship, Zell Miller Scholarship, Hope Grant, Zell Miller Grant, Hope Career Grant. You fill it out, it's, it's, uh, you only have to do it one time. How about completing the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid? It opens up October the 1st, which it's already started. Need a FSA ID, that's your electronic signature, which we'll get into. If you need help, check your guidance counselor uh, for an event uh, near you, or check with gafutures.org for events across the state where we'll provide you help to complete the FAFSA. This is what the FAFSA looks like. You'll start at the beginning, uh, start as a student. Then what year do you fill out? If you're a senior this year, you're gonna base it on 21-22 school year based on 2019 income tax. If you're gonna graduate early and you're a senior, you're gonna finish by the end of fall, you're gonna enroll in a college in the spring. You need to fill out also the 20, let me go back. The 2021 school year. Uh, but if you're a rising senior, if you're for next uh, fall, it's based on 2019 income tax. What do you need? You need your W-2s, your 1040 tax forms. You need bank statements, untaxed information if required. You need to complete an FSA ID. What is this? It's a user ID and password. It's your electronic signature. You can complete it on fafsa.gov. Click uh, create an FSA ID. Do not share this with anyone. One parent needs an FSA ID. Every student in your household that's going into college needs one. And high, uh, high school seniors, don't use your school email because it's, uh, of course, you know, it's going to stop once you graduate. And also, uh, you have to use different um, emails uh, altogether. Okay, you select a school. You can select up to 10 colleges. Then it's going to ask the question, are you dependent or independent? In the eyes of the federal government, you're not considered independent until age 24. Unless you can answer certain questions, then, then it'll make consideration, but you have to provide documentation. Who fills out the, the FAFSA? Natural parents and step parents. Mom and dad are divorced. Dad claims me on my taxes. I live with mama. Whose tax information do I use? Mama's. It's the parent who provides the most physical support. What if I don't like my parents? Can I use my grandparents' tax information? They have to adopt you. This is great. The IRS data retrieval. Instead of going line by line on your 1040, the IRS data retrieval will take you to the IRS site and will pre-fill that tax information. This is wonderful. Then you sign and you submit it with your FSA ID. Notice the student and a parent portion. What if the parents doesn't have a social security number? You have the option parent to print the signature page, sign it, date it, and, and send it to the address listed, which is in Lexington, Kentucky. Then you get a confirmation page, student, which will tell you, if you uh, what your expected family contribution is which determines if you're Pell eligible and if you qualify for subsidized and unsubsidized loans. Then you get a student aid report. The student aid report will let you know what you qualify in terms of the federal aid programs like the Pell Grant, the SFELG, the federal work study. What if there are special circumstances in, in your family? You can't report on the FAFSA. 2019 might have been a good year. 2020, we lost our job. This doesn't reflect uh, what's going on today. Contact the financial aid office. Let them know of your special circumstance. And they have the authority to adjust the expected family contribution based on the documents they need. So when in doubt, talk to the financial aid office. Comparing financial aid packages. You submitted the FAFSA. You can list up to 10 colleges, in-state, out-of-state, you may be picked for what they call verification, where basically they're just uh, making sure that, that all the numbers are 
or correct in the process and in most cases be accepted by the institution, you receive a financial aid award letter. It's going to basically tell you how much it costs, what you owe, do you receive federal and state aid, and other scholarships for the academic year. Compare the award letters. This will give you a chance whether you want to go to a school in state or out of state. Now, these are some additional resources that you can also qualify for. I mean, you can look for information, gafutures.org, gsfc.org, which is Georgia Student Finance Commission. Let me go back. Studentaid.gov, uh, which tells you about uh, different federal programs. I am one of nine across the state of Georgia. We work with the Pro Fair and we assist you. Check uh, gafutures.org to, to see who your outreach uh, member is. If you need help filling out your financial aid, if you need somebody to come to your school organization to do a financial aid presentation, that's why we're here. I'm in the purple. My name's Hal Wilkinson. I cover Gwinnett County, Hall County, basically most of Northeast Georgia. As a, social, as a friendly reminder, follow us on social media like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Now, with all being said and done, I went through a lot of information. But let me tell you from personal experience, uh, please check with your high school guidance counselor for local-based scholarships. Look for free websites that does not charge you. And again, as I said earlier, don't pay for uh, somebody for your scholarships. It sh this should only cost you time and effort. Uh, I have uh, I was I had the experience of putting two through co college myself. Um, my son went to Berry College, and it was uh, first he went to Georgia. It was twelve thousand dollars a year. We paid twenty four hundred dollars out of pocket. He went to Berry in the spring of two thousand and eight. He got a transfer scholarship of eight thousand dollars, and it went from thirteen thousand dollars per semester down to thirty five. We paid seven hundred forty four dollars out of pocket. My daughter went to Shorter. $20,000 a year, $80,000. We applied through the high school. We applied through the both institutions. We applied for local-based scholarships. And on an $80,000 education, 20 a year, now this is back, of course, in 2004, we only took out $25,000 in loans. So for every scholarship dollar that you, you uh, can acquire, the less you have to depend on loans. Let loans be the bottom line. Did we get turned down for scholarships? Sure we did. But a 200 here and 300 there, every bit helps. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us and, and, and we'll be glad to follow up with you. I appreciate your time and now we'll open up to Q&A. Thank you. Perfect, thank you so much. And we do have um, quite a few questions that have been submitted, which I'm happy to read if you wanna answer them, Hal. Um, and our first one is, if a student gets an associate's degree, are they still eligible for Zell Miller in their continuing years? Yes, Zell Miller pays up to 127 attempted hours. When you qualify for Zell and you apply in your uh, senior year through GSF apps, uh, all you have to do is maintain that GPA of 3.0 for Hope Scholarship and 3.3 for Zell Miller. Keep in mind, Hope you can qualify after high school. Zell Miller, you have to qualify while you're in high school. So there is hope after high school, but there's not Zell Miller after high school. Great, thank you. Uh, our next question is if work study is need-based aid. Yes. It's, and again, that's why I said it's not reported income because it's, it's through federal funds, but it has to be a job on campus. Sounds good. Um, our next question is, what if we meet the SAT and ACT scores for Zell, but not the GPA? Can I still apply for it? You can apply, but you still got to have the GPA. And keep in mind, we do a calculation in, during the academic year from, from fall of your freshman year, all the, I mean, from your freshman year all the way up to fall of your senior year. And then we do a final calculation when you graduate 
So if you're on a 3.666 and need that final push, we look at the final uh, transcript. Great. What if your parents didn't file taxes? Can I still do the FAFSA? You can on the FAFSA. It's going to ask you, uh, are you able to share your parents' uh, tax information? And at that point, you're either going to say yes or no. And then what I would do is I would follow up with the financial aid office to tell them about the circumstances. How does the um, various scholarship programs apply for dual enrollment students who have started college work in high school? Well, dual enrollment, keep this in mind. Uh, if you're dual enrollment in Georgia, um, that's not paid for by the lottery. It's like AP and IB classes, college credit before high school. It goes toward your degree, but it won't go toward the 127 hours that Hope pays for. So that gives you two wonderful choices. Suppose you got 10 dual enrollment classes. You can graduate a year early, or you can take 10 more classes on Hope because they're not funded through the lottery. So that kind of gives you some wiggle room with 127 uh, hours. Perfect. And a clarifying question on the, the one about Zell Miller and associate's degree. So if a daughter double graduates, she gets her high school degree and her associate's degree simultaneously, she can still apply for Zell Miller to finish a four-year degree. Yes. Because remember, and, and keep this in mind too, dual enrollment, it used to be you could get an associate degree, uh, but there's been some change now. It pays up to 30 semester credit hours. So any uh, hours you take beyond that, you have to pay out of pocket. Though you can still get a two-year associate degree. Great. Our next question is um, someone saying that they have court-ordered permanent custody of a student. They are not related and the student is not adopted. Do we apply under my financial records? Okay, court order. So you're the, you're the legal guardian. Uh, that's one of the, the questions, whether you're dependent or independent. Uh, that's what, if you can provide documentation, that student would be considered independent where they don't need your tax information. Remember, natural parents, step parents. Uh, but you be prepared to provide documentation probably from the courthouse in which it was uh, agreed upon. Great. Um, we have a question more kind of logistics based wondering if this meeting will be recorded and available to review and it will be in about a week or so um, a recording of this session will be available on the same website where you originally submitted your registration to view it. Um, so certainly feel free to, to circle back and watch again. Also use the Q&A button at the bottom if you have any other questions. I see we have a, a couple left, but if you have any others, make sure to get them in. Um, our next question is if someone has asylum pending, are they able to apply for these scholarships? It depends on the scholarship, um, the person who, who sets up the scholarship, especially if they're private, always, you know, reach out to them. Uh, in terms of uh, applying for the HOPE scholarship, uh, you can apply, again, as a political asylee if it's established, also as a resident alien or green card holder when, it's, when you do receive it. Perfect. Um, this student has military money and they're wondering if they can use Zelle and Hope first before using that. Well, you know, you're in a wonderful uh, situation. If, you're, if your parents was in the military and didn't use their GI Bill to a certain point, check with the veterans office. And yes, you can, I mean, it's, it's, it's like pieces of the puzzle. Uh, of course, Zelle, Miller and Hope Scholarship will go first and then whatever comes in behind that. But keep in mind, Zell Miller and Hope only goes toward tuition. You may use it for other expenses. Great. Does the Zell Miller consider the student's weighted GPA or their unweighted GPA? It is the unweighted. It's in all core classes. And by the way, great question. It's in math, science, English, social studies, and foreign language. So if you get, let's say, five points for taking an AP class, you, you made a 85 and they add five points, you got an A for 90 if that's on the grade scale. We'll take it back to an 85 to a B, simply because the grade scales are not the same across the state of Georgia. But we do add a 0.5 for all AP dual enrollment and IB classes uh, up to a B. A being the highest value, we don't. Great. Um, if a student has a 529 plan, will they still qualify for financial aid? 
They can, and again, it depends on, it, it, a lot of people think, is it the salary we make to, to, if you qualify for financial aid? It's called the expected family contribution. What do they look at? They look at parents' income. They look at family size. They look at age of the parents. How many are enrolled in college? Daddy makes 60,000, mama makes 60,000. 120 sounds like a lot of money. Size of the family. What if you've got five students and you've got a, a in-law living with you? The 120,000 may not go very far, so size of the family. Age of the parents. Mama, you're 65. Daddy, you're 65. You had your son and daughter late in life. You're gonna get social security. Drop in the income, age of the parents. How many enrolled in college? What if you got triplets? One's in in-state, two are out of state. That can cut into it. So this is what they call the expected family contribution. How much mom and dad can contribute toward that education? Great. What is the time frame to be considered a Georgia resident? 12 months from the time you graduate, they look at the, the date of high school graduation. If your parents have lived here at least for the past 12 months, you're considered a, a resident of the state of Georgia, but also check with the, 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 college, uh, the colleges also for if, if there's any extra residence requirements. If you are applying to an out-of-state college, but do it virtually, can you still apply to FAFSA? Yes, FAFSA is called the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. It's good for in-state and out-of-state. Perfect. Are you able to apply for scholarships as a freshman in high school? Yes. Uh, when's, when's the earliest you can apply for a uh, scholarship? I would say no later than the summer before you, between your junior and senior year. Uh, and also, as stated earlier, a lot of uh, students think once we graduate high school, we start looking for scholarships. Oh, no. Continue to look. There may be departmental scholarships. But the earlier you look, the more you can find out about deadlines uh, that may be submitted toward the senior year instead of waiting until your senior year to find out. And also contact the, the, the college's financial aid offices for what their deadlines are for their scholarships to have your information in. Our next question is um, about the military GI Bill and a student wondering if they don't use it for their bachelor's, can they use it afterwards for things like medical school? Uh, I'll be honest with you, uh, I would check with the veterans uh, office on your college campus to uh, make more determination about that. Great. Um, when a student applies and receives scholarships, does that money get sent to the school or to the student? Again, it depends on the, on the scholarship. Chick-fil-A at one time years ago would send the, uh, the money to the student. I know a student who used it to rebuild the, the engine in his Volkswagen. Now I think they send it straight to the school, but again, it, it depends on the, the, the organizer who, uh, who has funded that scholarship. And for the larger programs, the HOPE ones you were talking about, it goes right to the school? It goes right to the school. It'll show up on your award letter. And keep in mind, HOPE will go toward tuition. Perfect. Um, and then another question is, is there any chance to grandfather in students who had already started dual enrollment prior to the law change? Is there a way to start Zell Miller early prior to high school graduation? Uh, basically, you have to graduate high school in order to receive uh, Zell Miller or Hope Scholarship. Uh, there are appeals processes, but I, like I said, you can always uh, reach out to Georgia Student Finance Commission, uh, a program admin at gsfc.org for any, any questions or any, any appeals. Perfect. And then I believe our final question is, where do I go to actually apply for the HOPE Scholarship? Okay, great question. Again, and this is not a confusion, but there are two ways. Fill out the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, every year. Or go to gafutures.org, click on the Hope and State Aid link, click on State Applications tab, click on GSF Apps. Click on it, fill it out. You have applied. It's good for 10 years. Why do we give you a, a backup for Hope Scholarship programs? If parents haven't filed taxes, why should a student be penalized for not receiving state aid? I say this out of love and respect. Students, you fill it out. Helicopter mamas, leave it alone. 
because I've had, I've had uh, parents who think they're going back to college and they'll put in their social security number and so do their students. So please, let Junior have a say in this. It only takes 20 minutes. and You don't have to apply for it no more. Perfect. Great. I believe we've made it. Oh, we have one more question. If I apply for or use scholarship money to go to an in-state college for four years, can I still apply for scholarships when transitioning to an out-of-state college? That's why we encourage you to, to uh, continue to look beyond high school. Keep this in mind. There, uh, when you graduate college, you are a walking billboard representing that program. They may have departmental scholarships that they will award you because you go into that major. Remember, the key is institutional scholarships. Go to the financial aid or the admissions office. They normally have a page set aside for different program scholarships. Perfect. Great. Well, thank you for all the questions, Hal. Thank you for lending your expertise this evening as well. And thank you to everyone who tuned in and, and joined us. Just a reminder, um, when this webinar ends, you'll be prompted with a quick survey of four questions, and we would appreciate any feedback that you may have. Additionally, if you're interested in watching the recording of this presentation, it'll be available in about a week's time at the same website where you initially registered. Thanks again for participating in Georgia Virtual College Fair and have a great evening. Take care.